Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name is Lucia and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Pearl of the Pacific and today is Sun or sorry Monday uh, March 14th which is Pi Day 3.14 so happy Pi Day everyone and this is my knitting podcast so welcome. All right, let's get going with On the Island. I actually, let's start with, well, the conch shell. My show notes were a little off over here. Um, March Knit Along, which I'm calling Spring Cleaning, is going on. So if you finish anything that you have sitting around in your works in progress pile that is over three months old or around there, you know, I'm not going to be totally exact. If you finish anything, post it in the thread and you'll be answered to win probably a skein of yarn. I'll probably just pull one prize because I think it's a smaller um, group of people and it's only one month so there will be one prize for that. Not entirely sure what it is but I'll figure it out at some point. And the other cow that will be coming up after that is green and yellow and that will be for April and May. And I just wanted to clarify that um, I know I call them cows like knit-alongs but they're also open to crochet or spinning or any fiber related crafts. So I'm not being exclusionary. I'm very open about these craft along really. Um, but I think KAL is kind of a common term for those things. So that's why I use it. But crochet is definitely welcome. I've, I, I had someone specifically ask me about that. So I just wanted to make that clear. Um, on the island, I have some socks which is not terribly surprising, right? Uh, I had a meeting or gathering that lasted uh, most of Saturday, and so I cast on a bunch of socks. In the morning, I wound up a bunch of sock yarn and cast on a bunch of socks. Um, this week, I'll jump kind of to from the mainland. One of the yarn shops near me is going out of business, and so everything's on sale. I went in because I needed a skein of yarn for a project, and I got some more sock needles. So I got a another set of Chowgu Red Lace, the 24 inch cables, which is shorter than what I um, than what I like, but it, they had two of them and they matched and that's what they had. So I went with that and I got two of them because they were like 50% off or something. So I got two for the price of one. Oh, sorry, this is a different package. I'm realizing this is the 24 inch. I had 32. Okay, here's the other 24. Somehow they're taller. I didn't realize that. The 24 inch are taller. I think the the, the cable length is different, but the um, the needle length is the same. Anyway, so I picked up a set of those so I could knit more socks, and that's what I did. So I cast on a bunch of toes. These are some toes that are going to become the toe up no pearl version of the monkey socks and it's called the crazy monkeys and it's by Jennifer O'Sullivan and she took the original pattern which is by cookie a yes the monkey pattern it's hugely popular if you look it up on Ravelry and kind of made notes about a toe up um, no pearl version and I've knit it before it was just a while ago and the yarn is No Makers House Gnome in the Scarlet Witch colorway. And so I've got two toes here. And this is the yarn. It's absolutely beautiful. Shades of red. I'm just kind of going to keep going like that. And then I cast on two more toes for what is going to be the Dragonfly Socks. And this yarn is some One Twisted Tree, which I got at... Um, the knitting pipeline retreat and I was waiting to show you the yarn but I couldn't wait because I need to cast these on so I wound it up and cast on some toes so I was I just knit um, toe after toe and that's her prime fingering in the um, Admiral Adama colorway so I picked that up at knitting pipeline I already said that okay sorry it's the end of the day and my brain is kind of a little scattered. I'll explain that a little later. Uh, oh, and then I cast on the toes of these socks, which are now almost done. These are, this is a yarn. It is 
Phoenix Fiber Company. And I picked this up for review at um, Vogue Knitting Live. And this is their hand-dyed two-ply sock weight. It doesn't have a color on it. But it's a tweed. And it's absolutely fabulous. So this is one sock. I suppose I should have brought another sock blocker. That's all right. So that's the bottom of the sock. You can really see the colors. I am loving this yarn. I love the tweed. I've knit another tweed, but it wasn't for me. So these are going to be for me. And I did the same toe I did on the, um, or a very similar toe that I did on the I Smell Snow socks. So it's straighter on this side and more angled on this side. So this is about where my big toe goes. I put my foot up here, but that just gets awkward. Anyway, so the pattern is the Bickerstrat pattern by um, Kemper Ray of the Junk Yarn Podcast, which is absolutely fabulous. And I did cuff a little bit longer than the leg. It was a little, a little shorter for me, but that's pretty standard, I suppose. I often will knit the pattern, oops, the side pattern, until I reach that kind of the end of the toe and, um, and then do a cuff. I haven't woven in the ends yet. Or at least this end. I weave in the toe end as I knit it. Um, but I was at the end of a repeat here, and if I had done a whole other repeat, and then the cuff, it would have been really tall. Which would have been fine. I've got plenty of yarn. I mean, that's what I've got left over. And the second one, sorry, we were trying to get the bird out of the room, and she flew up on the fan and knocked a bunch of dust down. And so now I've got dust all up in my nose, so I'm sorry about that. And this is the second one. And it is all tangled up here, but it's almost done. I've just started the ribbing, like just started the ribbing, a few rows into it. And this is a super easy pattern, and I've it's really quick to knit up. I cast these on Saturday. So yeah, it's like three days. And I've already I'm already I'm, I'll finish this one tonight. But I am really loving this yarn. It's very soft, but very sturdy. Um, I love the tweediness, and I love how the colors are playing with each other. I wasn't sure how it would knit up, but it's just, it's this perfect kind of rainbow of colors, and it's not super bright, so it would go with um, a lot of things. It's just kind of a subtle rainbow of color, but there's um, deep reds in it that you can see right, right there. There's these pops of orange and these deep blues there. So those are the main colors. And, the, and then the Tweety base is kind of a, it's not as like ecru, like this. This is a natural, what you would think of as a natural. It's a little grayer than that, which is kind of nice. And they did have some undyed skeins there at the booth. And so I could see it, the base, and the base is just like that much grayer. It's, um, so that's kind of pretty. It's not on a white base. So the nice thing about these is you wouldn't notice when they're dirty, which is kind of nice. <laughs> um, just trying to think of what else I was thinking about when I was knitting it, but it is squishy and it is very stretchy. Um, I did a straight up fishless, fish lips kiss heel. I didn't actually do my gusset because it was so super stretchy that when I was trying it on to see um, if I was ready to do the heel turn, I didn't feel like I needed a gusset. So I think it's in part because of the pattern is very stretchy and also the heel is very stretchy and the yarn is very stretchy. And I really like that. So I haven't worn them, obviously. I just tried it on to see where uh, I need to put the heel. I did try this one on just to make sure it fit. Of course, after I was like here on the second sock, I'm like, maybe I should try it on and make sure that heel's okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's not a problem, but it was just funny as I'm knitting. I'm like, maybe I should have checked that. But they fit very well. And I did do my, um, it is a cuff down pattern, but I did it toe up with my own toe, heel, and cuff. It's pretty standard for me. I just use the 
the sock pattern or the stitch pattern from it and I really liked it. It was a little bit confusing in the beginning, but if you, um, I can't, I won't give away the pattern. I think it could have been written just a little clearer, but once I read it a couple times and then just really thought about it, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now. But in the beginning, I was really confused. I knit around and I'm like, wait a minute, this is not working. <laughs> like, I have way less stitches than I should and that's not going to work for a sock. So I ripped it back and I was like, let's reread this pattern again. And then I figured it out and it wasn't a problem. But just to note that if you want to knit that pattern, make sure you read it carefully. As with any pattern. So it's not that big of a thing. But I am very much enjoying this yarn that I was sent. Or not sent. I picked it up while I was there. And there, the people there were very nice. And, they, and I kept all three socks in my back row bag that I got um, from... Maggie. Oh, it's on the other side. It's only on the one side. It's the Magster. Her um, Instagram name is Maggie Stamps. And this was kind of a custom bag that she did for me. Because I sent her the fa fabric and I said I wanted a large bag to keep my Batgirl costume pieces in. And she made this. And I've been using it as a project bag. Um, and I have my Batgirl costume pieces kind of in a a box in my closet, like a plastic container to keep them nice and unsquished in the closet because sometimes the cat crawls in there and things can get smushed. But when I travel, I might um, put them in this because it's fun. Uh, okay, so that's it for on the island. Off the island, set sail, I have another pair of socks which you will be surprised to know are the same pattern as the one I'm working on. Oh, I know. I knit two of the same socks in the same pattern in a row. Never happens, but it did this time. Because I was winding yarn and I thought, oh, I really want to knit that Phoenix Fiber Company because I need a review to do in March. And um, I was like, what does it want to be? I couldn't decide. And then finally he's like, you know, it wants to be socks. And then I had just finished these, like literally just finished them that morning. I was like, you know what? It really wants to be that pattern. And I couldn't get that out of my head. And so like, okay, I'll just go with it. I already know the pattern. It'd be super easy to do on the go. And so that's what happened. I was super busy this weekend. So those socks got a lot of attention um, with the all gay gathering on Saturday. And I had a rehearsal that that evening and then the next morning I had um, my performance for my handball choir and then I had my choir and then I had a photo shoot for my new pattern which was an adventure I'll tell you about it later and then I had another gathering and by the time I got home it was crazy but some of those like the two gatherings and choir I was able to sit in it in them so that was nice anyway you're probably wondering what's up with these socks that I'm waving around the, this is the Bicker Strat pattern again, and this is it blocked on a different yarn, so you get to see it a little bit more. And this yarn is a sock blank that I got from Sun Valley Fibers. This is what it looks like. This is what's left of it. And it's, it's in the citrus colorway, and I picked it up at also at Vogue Knitting Live. And I had someone ask me about if, I, if there were more of these, and they're not in shop right now but um, I asked Jeanette and she said she may be making more of these so if you're interested in this. This totally looks like eggs to me. It was funny I was making eggs the other morning and um, for breakfast and it totally looked like this. I had one really dark egg like I just cracked three eggs into a pan to fry them or to scramble them and one had a dark yolk and two of them had like a little lighter yolks and it just, it looked exactly like this. It was really funny. So I'm sitting there knitting on my scrambled egg socks while eating scrambled eggs. But I really like this pattern and I really like this yarn. It's a very fine fingering, um, I realized. And I did do the gusset on these, although I probably didn't need to because this is another very stretchy yarn. And most of the kinks are blocked out, you can see. Um, and I think as I wear it more, they'll block out more because I can notice like there's some funky stitches right in here 
And I think that might have had to do with um, some of the kinkiness that you get from knitting from a sock blank, because that's what the yarn looks like when you knit it. It's kind of fun, but it also creates some wonky stitches. So it's been fun to knit the same pattern in a non-wonky yarn. So I've been very much enjoying these. I haven't worn them yet, but I just finished them. They're pretty much the same in the number of... I did do... The foot is a little different in terms of um, number of repeats for me before I did the heel. I did the heel turn, I think, sooner on these than I did on the other ones, which is weird because it's probably it's the same number of rows. Um, I did the same toe as that one, um, but I, which we call, I did the heel a little earlier on these. They fit fine, so well. All right, that's it for set sale. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> I finished um, a hat, a fluid slouchy beanie by Karen McCall out of Noro Kirion. I already gifted it to the recipient and she's enjoying it, though it's been a little warm. It's a little chilly over the weekend, but today it was a little warmer. Um, so I will insert a picture here. I took a picture of me like holding it in my hand before I gave it to her. It's kind of an awkward picture, but it's beautiful colors. Um, I did have to, it was a 50 gram skein. I did have to get another skein. Uh, it was a different colorway, so I ended up using it just on the inside of the brim because it's, it's a double brim hat. So um, I knit kind of the inside of the brim and then switched to the yarn that, because she bought the yarn and, gave, and gift, uh, gave it to me to knit the hat. So I had to get a second one just to do the inside because I had, I ripped this hat out quite a few times to get it right. Um, cause I, the yarn was a little thicker than the pattern was calling for and it turned out really dense. And so I ripped it out and I used a bigger needle and then I had to rip it out again cause the stitch count was all wrong. And, um, I ended up taking out a ton of stitches and using size needle that I think was two sizes bigger than the pattern and that ended up working and um, so in the end I didn't need as much of the second skein as I thought I did because in the beginning I was like oh wow this is not gonna even be even close but it worked out and it was okay so that was done um, the other thing I finished was I got some swatches some crochet swatches from my grandmother a while ago I think I showed them on the podcast um, when she passed away, my mom found these in her things and sent them to me and they were on, um, little black cards. And so I thought it would be nice to frame them. And so I had to get, so here's one of them and they're these beautiful crochet swatches. And, um, I got some black, like cardstock paper from the craft store and sewed them on. So I cut them off of the cards that they were on and then sewed them just with a needle and thread onto the um, these cards. But this is like the full size of here because originally the cards were just as big as what you see. Um, but the, the black paper does go all the way behind the mat and to keep them in the middle, which helps. So I just placed them very nicely and sewed them on here. So this is one of them actually three frames there's three separate cards so I got three frames and there were a couple that I didn't put on here just because they were a little bedraggled looking and um, didn't quite fit so that's another set and it's just so fun and you can tell some of them um, there's like a, a crochet chain in the beginning you can tell where she started or maybe where she ended um, some of them are like cut off of other pieces and it's really just kind of fun that these were these were literally swatches that she made that she had just sewn to this card kind of haphazardly to keep them as a reference point. But I just think they're so beautiful that I wanted to keep them as pieces of art because they really are. So I'm going to find a place to hang these on the wall and display them. So I'm very excited that I finally got that project done. 
I've had those for a while and I've had the black cardstock for a while and finally one afternoon I was like, I'm just doing this. So that got done. Um, I finished something else which I've now forgotten so that might get shown to you later. Uh, from the mainland, I have a ton of things. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention was I got gifted a shawl pattern by um, Mrs. Shu, who is Sarah of the Cultivate and Create audio podcast, which I have yet to listen to. I know I'm terrible. <laughs> I watched In a Snit when it was her and Christy, and then she, um, their schedules just didn't work out. And so she started an audio podcast, and I just have not been able to listen to it. I've been woefully behind on certain podcasts, and hers is one of them. So I plan on getting caught up soon. But I saw her at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat, and she brought her new shawl design. So we were comparing shawl design. Not comparing, but showing them off. And hers is called A Choice Bit of Calico, and it is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. It's knit out of one twisted tree for like alpacas lace silk or something I don't know what it is but it's stunning and it's got beads up and down the side and it's a crescent shape shawl and so she gifted me the pattern so nicely because it just came out this week and you should definitely check it out and a choice bit of calico is a saying from I think it was like the 50s or 60s and it means a very attractive woman and this is a very attractive shawl so I thought that was very fun and so I plan on knitting that at some point. Um, the other things that I wanted to talk about were my goodies from the Knitting Pipeline Retreat, the rest that I didn't show you last week. And so I will rearrange here because they're in the box behind me. So this is some of the yarn, or all of the yarn, that I got at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat, except for the ones that I've already cast on and the bags that I showed you last week. Um, I think I showed these these what did I not show okay so here's the other one twisted tree that I got which was sun on your face and it is bright yellow and fabulous and um, they just released a kit with um, Diana of suburban stitcher called the suburban prairie kit and um, Susie designed a uh, sock pattern and Danny dyed the yarn, and um, Diane made the bag, and I think I'm going to make the sock pattern with this. I didn't get the kit, but I think I'm going to make the sock pattern with this yarn. And what else did I get? I got a skein from another crafty girl called I Can Fix It. And I, you may remember this colorway. I have a trillion shawl out of it, but I got a skein in the worsted because um, it's just so pretty and I love her stuff. And um, I'm going to make the Galactic Hat by Giuliana Puccini of the um, Giuliana's Fiber. Oops, don't need to do that. Okay, the Giuliana's Fiber um, yarn company and podcast. So you should definitely check her out. She's the one who did, um, did the Ice Mall Snow Sock yarn. Um, the other thing that I picked up were these four skeins from Two Guys Yarn Company. That's their logo. And I got them to make the Exploration Shawl, Exploration Station Shawl by um, Stephen West. And it's a four color shawl. Um, I'm not going to use all of these yarns, but I will use probably most of them. And the first one I was drawn to is Solar Power because um, it's yellow. I'm totally into yellow right now. And then I picked up Emerald Falls, which is a beautiful green. And then I picked up Mr. Drapper. Sorry, alarm going off or something. And uh, Mr. Drapper. And I had these three and I was trying to decide what would go with them and I had a a lighter silvery gray and then I had a darker gray and neither of them were working and then I picked up this which is russet like a russet potato and put it with it I was like yes that's it that's totally it it's funny because I was as I was knitting on my second bigger strat socks the colors are actually kind of similar it's got this kind of same color and definitely this same color 
There isn't a whole lot of green or yellow, but it would definitely go with the shawl. And 